main source of contact they'll ever have with an elected official. Um, most people will be in court on a traffic ticket or they might have a personal injury matter or uh, some kind of contract dispute or whatever. Uh, and you want to make sure that you, you get good quality people in there. And this is a decision that could actually affect someone's life big time. I mean, you're talking about your house, your car, it could be your freedom, your very life. I mean, judges make important decisions. It's not to be, you know, how often do you vote? And, and actually, the primary is the election. There's only one judgeship in which there's any Republicans running. And actually, there's two Republicans on the ballot, and they're both running in the same <laughs> judgeship, which is kind of interesting. Well, as, as a practical matter, the, the, the primary, as far as judicial races go in Cook County, the primary is, is the election because... The last several election cycles, there have not been uh, candidates fielded by the Republican Party. So whoever wins the Democratic primary nomination essentially is elected to that judgeship. No, absolutely, and they just showed Jewish Chicago on the screen. We have a complete, thorough judicial review in Jewish Chicago of all the appellate and circuit court races, not to mention a number of the sub-circuits. Um, and, um, you know, in the, um, I mean, there's, a, it, it's, so important to make sure you vote. You know, uh, <laughs> by the way, just for the record, Jewish Chicago, I don't do the picking on it. What I, what I actually do is I have a number of people that advise me, people that, that are judges themselves. Uh, I mean, over the years from covering the judges, I, I've collected a batch of legal scholars that have been a tremendous help, and um, that is how we put things together. And um, do you have the time right now, Jim? Well, you know what, I'd, I'd like to... No, no, I mean, do you have the actual physical... I don't have a watch. I just want to know <laughs> what the physical time is. Yes, we're, uh, we're at uh, 11.01. 11.01. So, okay, we're, we're, this is going to be part two when we, when we put the show on the air. I want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank uh, Sonny Hirsch and Keith McDonald. They have done a, a really superior job. Uh, they've outdone themselves with this split screen where these, these elected officials are on the campaign trail calling us in showing their picture on one side and showing uh, Jim and I talking to him. We want to thank both of them very much. This is an S.I. Hirsch production pre-election special. We want to say hi to Marty Levinson, one of the few shows you're going to see that I'm on, that, that he isn't on. Um, you can always, this show is going to be on the web within the next 24 to 36 hours. And if you missed part one, this is part two, when we're going to break it down and re replay it, um, we had President Terry O'Brien, who we support very strongly, uh, who's running for president of the Cook County Board, and Judge Michael Bender, who we support very strongly, who's running in sub-circuit A. And I took the lead on the first two. Uh, I'm going to introduce our next guest, and I'm going to let uh, Jim, is, is much more familiar with the subject than I am, but our next guest is a candidate for assessor of Cook County, and Joseph Berrios. How are you? Morning, Jim. Good morning, Avi. Morning. Jim? <laughs> Commissioner, how are you doing this morning? Good, good, good. I, I imagine you're out on the campaign trail somewhere? Oh, yeah. We, I've got about six stops today. I had uh, seven stops yesterday. So we're out there carrying the message, you know, letting people know what we stand for and what we intend to do if we get elected to the assessor's office. Now, can you tell our viewers a little bit about your background? You've got a very, very long uh, and 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 deep background in the area of, of property taxes. Can you talk a little bit about what you've done so far and how that will help you in terms of uh, serving as the assessor of Cook County? Oh, sure. Uh, my, my history has been one of helping taxpayers. If, when I decided back in 87 to run for the Board of Tax Appeals, as it was known then, it's the Board of Review today, and was, re -ele and was elected uh, countywide as the candidate to go into that office and, you know, make open the doors up to taxpayers uh, in Cook County so that they could have an appeal process that they could be proud of. And I've been reelected to that office uh, since 1988. Over the years, we've been able to help taxpayers by ex explaining to them what the Board of Review does and how they can benefit by appealing their taxes if they feel their, uh, their taxes are too high. We've streamlined the system to this day to make it that if any taxpayer homeowner that wants us to look at their property and render a decision as to if the assessment's too high, we'll do the work for them. We have opened up that office. We've made it very transparent where anyone can walk in and see what we've done on properties. We, 
we uh, put all our decisions on the web so that people can see what we do with the uh, different property throughout Cook County. So we've opened up the process so the taxpayers can understand and be able to come to our office and be able to get a fair hearing and be heard. Now, what are some of the things that you've done uh, with your current office on the Board of Review uh, that you'd like to translate into uh, serving as assessor? Well, I think that the number one thing that we need to do is uh, at the Board of Review, we had four, almost 400,000 complaints filed last year. That wow. means people aren't being heard. People have the right to be heard, and I think that we need to get the numbers correct the first time. And we can do that uh, various ways. One, by listening to homeowners when uh, the assessments are before the assessments come out and trying to find out what's going on in the different neighborhoods. I mean, in some neighborhoods you have gentrification going on, and you, know, you, you get all these new houses, but the people who have been there for years, all of a sudden their assessments go up because of the sales in the community. Well, we need to take a better look at that. I mean, just because they build brand new houses around you doesn't mean your property value has gone up because of the fact that you may have repairs that are needed to your property. You may have other things that affect the value to that property. The other thing we need to do is we need to listen to the suburban assessors and bring them into the process so they can give us information as to what's going on within different neighborhoods and communities. And another important thing that we can do is uh, talk to the real estate boards that are out there. I mean, if everybody knows, I mean, just by reading the paper, just by seeing what's going on, we have huge foreclosures uh, throughout Cook County, and values have gone down. They haven't gone up. So why are assessments still going up? So we need to get more information and be better prepared to make the original numbers because if we can get the numbers correct at the assessor's office, that means, you know, the Board of Review won't have as many cases property tax appeal board won't have any cases. In the long run, we end up saving money through government, which in effect goes back to the taxpayers. Are there some things you'd like to do with technology in the office? Oh yeah, I, again, you know, we, need to, we need to bring in information. We need to make sure that what goes into the computers is what's going on today. Uh, we don't need to look at things that are two, three, four years old to make assessments uh, based on those numbers. We need to update all the, uh, the computer information that goes in there. Uh, the computer is only going to give you what you put into it. So the more information that you're able to feed into the computer, uh, I believe the, the fairer the assessments are going to be and the more accurate the assessments are going to be. And, and you would believe, too, that a, a more accurate assessment then would cut down on the number of appeals? Oh, absolutely. It would definitely cut down on the number of appeals because people will see that, you know, the numbers that we're coming out with at the assessor's office in the future are numbers that are realistic and actually uh, reflect what's going on within their communities. And give people an idea, how many properties are, are there on the tax rolls in Cook County in ballpark? Uh, there, there, if, if you count everything, there's about 1.6, uh, 1.7 million pieces of property, but some of those properties are exempt. Uh, so, I mean, you actually look at about a 1.3 million pieces of property that we put values on. Wow. That's a lot. That is a lot, and that's why we need, the, you know, we need information. But, you know, there's no reason of that 1.2, 1.3, why a third of uh, the, the taxpayers out there feel their assessments are too high. You know, 31 percent. I'm good at math. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I do want to thank uh, Ed McElroy for introducing us, uh, you know, because until recently I never even uh, met you before. Yeah, well, dude, I've been hired to work at the Board of Review, and, you know, I'm one of those quiet guys that, you know, puts his nose to the grindstone and tries to get the work done and tries to make sure that the people who, who hire you, and, and that's the way I really look at it, you know, when you go to election, voters hire you to uh, and give you their trust to make sure that you can, you know, that you go in there and do a job for them. And you stand for election every four years, and you know they get to decide whether you should be uh, rehired again. So I mean, all elected officials work for taxpayers and the voters. So I mean, they entrust you to do a good job, and that's what uh, I've been doing over the years. So you've been in office for how long at this point? Uh, I was elected state rep uh, back in 1982. I was the first Hispanic ever elected to the Illinois legislature. I was the first Hispanic ever elected to a countywide executive office. And just recently, uh, 
uh, I was given the honor of being the uh, first Hispanic to head the Cook County Democratic Party here in Cook County. And Joe, what is your uh, your ballot number so that uh, when voters go in, they'll know that? Uh, it's ballot number 106. I would hope that they would look at that and mark that number so that uh, I can get elected and I can start working for them at the assessor's office. Well, we want to wish you a lot of luck in the coming election. And, and um, you know, I, I think you're a probable winner, and I hope you do a great job for the people of Cook County, and maybe we won't have to have 31% appeals. That's a lot. Yeah, that is a lot. And when you, when you look at the cost and the time that's involved in it, uh, I truly believe we can get the numbers correct. So punch 106, and you get Joe Berrios to be the next assessor of Cook County. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Abby. Thank you very much, and uh, good luck on the campaign trail. Thank you. A couple of things I think uh, we should talk about since this is a live show. Uh, people can still early vote. And, you know, I, I, Terry O'Brien was talking in the uh, first segment of the show about apathy being one of the, the greatest problems with this election. Uh, despite the fact that people are, are very angry in many cases about the course of government on a national level, uh, every election official I've talked to thinks that uh, voter turnout is going to be relatively low this, this election, uh, which is kind of puzzling to me. If people are, are really interested in change, this is our opportunity to make it. Uh, but you still can early vote in Cook County and in the city of Chicago until January 28th. Uh, so you can all the way up through uh, Thursday. Through Thursday. And it's please do. Please vote. You can make a difference. These, these are individual people that are voting. These, this is one person at a time who equals these hundreds of thousands of, you know, votes that, that can bring, and there are good candidates, there's some excellent candidates that we try to present to you today, you know, that are running for office. And, and I can't emphasize enough how important that is. Well, and, and, and as far as the mechanics of it go, there are uh, 51 early voting sites for the city of Chicago. You don't have to vote at the voting site in your, your ward or your township. The county clerk for suburban voters has 43 sites. Uh, these are open weekdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. And uh, it, it can be very convenient. And again, if you happen to live, say, in the 50th ward on the north side, but you work south, you can stop in an early voting uh, 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 location there and vote your ballot from the 50th ward. It's all computerized, and when you give the, uh, the personnel there your information, they give you a computer card that has the ballot for the area where you're living. So it's very easy to do. Uh, the other thing that's still available is uh, uh, no-fault absentee, which is the first time we've had it in Illinois. Uh, up till now, when you wanted to vote absentee, it was because you were going, going to be out of the county or you were ill and couldn't get to the polling place. Now all you have to do is fill out a form that says, mail me a ballot, and uh, a ballot can be mailed to you. You can still do that. And as long as the ballot is postmarked by February 2nd, which is Election Day, it will be counted even if it arrives after February 2nd at the Board of Elections or the county clerk. That's very important to note. And by the way, that also reminds me, I want to thank our, in this segment, our entire studio audience, Alita Nally, uh, Jim's, Jim's wife, who was, uh, who's here today. And you know what, I, I want to get to some of the judge things, because I don't know how much time we'll have at the end. But, uh, you know, you were talking about the quality of candidates. And, you know, I actually, with all the interviewing, I, I concentrated on I've got to think about... Uh, who some of these people are, but actually not that hard because actually on the cover, um, we've got I've got Judge Michael Bender, I've got um, I've got Judge Jim Epstein, who's running for appeals court, who's really an exceptionally good candidate, and um, somebody who's very very um, worthy of your vote. And Ep Epstein's considered the third generation judge. I mean, they're basically legends in in the um, you know in the Jewish community. Not to mention among the general community, he's got highly qualified and highly recommend this from just about everybody. Well, there's a, there's a couple people that I know personally that uh, I've practiced with over the years. Diane Marsalek is uh, running for judge. I uh, like her very, very much, and we endorsed her in Jewish Chicago as well. Her punch number's 156. She's had a very, uh, very good judicial, uh, pardon me, a, uh, a good legal career, uh, which would set her very well. She's also uh, been very involved in her community and community policing and, and just a good citizen and a really terrific person. Yeah, and I know her personally, and, and I think she'd be an excellent judge. She has great temperament and uh, is a person of integrity. Um, there are a couple of other people I just mentioned, uh, Judge Tom Lyons, who fortunately for him has no opponent. So Tom will be elected uh, uh, a judge and, again, uh, a very, very a qualified guy. person. Again, uh, uh, Judge Ray Mitchell, uh, who is running for a vacancy, who... Uh, was appointed to fill a vacancy is now running for that. 
uh, very highly qualified, uh, has worked for a number of years at Winston Strawn, which is one of the largest law firms in the world. Uh, has a very good reputation for honesty and fairness. Yeah, interestingly enough, that uh, he is the only person that has that that's got cons he's c considered qualified or recommended by everybody. And every single one of his opponents, he have more not qualifieds and not recommended. I mean, this is such a you know the funny thing is my my panel actually didn't vote in that race. I guess they thought it was so clear, so I had to at least mention that um, you know. But but he's he's somebody who's very highly thought of. Well, and, and, and I, I would remind people, too, you can bring uh, Jewish Chicago, a publication like that, into the voting booth with you. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, in fact, it's encouraged, particularly when you get to the judicial races. I'm sure people are very, uh, you know, in tune in terms of who's running for governor and who's running for senator and people like Terry O'Brien running countywide for Cook County board president. But you, uh, you get down to the judicial ballot, and, and there are a lot of offices and a lot of names and it maybe get a little confusing or overwhelming and that's where being able to bring in a publication like Jewish Chicago where as Avi has uh, mentioned he talks to a wide range of attorneys about judicial candidates before he makes any sort of a recommendation. And judges also. Judges <laughs> and you know people in the legal community who can say this person is qualified, this person is honest, this person is hardworking, this is someone you can count on to do a good job as a judge. Yeah, some of the people I want to mention here, and I've got my glasses on because I need them to read my own paper, even though I, it's a 14,000-word election story, and I wrote it. But I, anyway, uh, some of the people who were endorsed in here include, and I apologize for leaving people out, are William Burnett Raines, who's thought of very highly for the Berlin vacancy. There's Judge John Patrick Callahan. Um, by the way, Raines is 153. Callahan is 166. I know I'm going to leave people out. But, uh, you know, read throughout the paper. There's a number of really excellent candidates um, that are very important. Um, it's 134 for Judge Jim Epstein, and also Judge Thomas L. Hogan for the O'Malley vacancy is 137. And uh, there's other people I like. I, I just can't mention everybody. And actually, you know what? There's actually, I have to say it, there's actually a person or two that I'm going to vote for that wasn't necessarily endorsed here. There wasn't necessarily a person endorsed against them. But even if I like somebody, it's up to the judicial panel themselves to make those decisions and, and not me. So there, there's some times where I feel like gritting my teeth. But you know what? A lot of times I'll switch my mind and, and go with the people that really know what they're doing because these are the people that really go to court and deal with these people. Right, and, and again, I, I, I've said it before, but these are the people that the average citizen is probably going to have the most contact with in, in the course of their, their careers. Yeah. You know, the funny thing is in this particular election, I have actually found the gubernatorial and senatorial races more boring than the lesser offices, and I can't tell you I'm really excited about it. You know, for those of you who are waiting for me to tell you who I like I, I, on those levels, I don't. <laughs> you know, on the Republican side, I like Kirk, I like Jim Ryan. On the Democratic side, I, I mean, I really don't have, I, I think I, 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 in the paper, I, I basically, I've never actually voted for Pat Quinn, and I'm actually thinking about voting for him this time. I, we had actually had a run-in in 1972 <laughs> at Mayfield Junior College, but, uh, you know, it's... And of uh, course, uh, Dan Hines is running against him in that race, and Dan's been the comptroller uh, of the state of Illinois. He's for, got a good record. Yeah, so that'll be a very interesting race. Uh, yeah, that's I one of the that's reasons why I'm one. not big on anybody in the race and didn't I don't think I gave a fit an official endorsement here and then uh, there you know I mean there are a lot of uh, races on the ballot everything from US senator to governor uh, and we also have uh, lieutenant governor which is a very going to be an interesting race we'll be talking to one of the candidates shortly um, nobody was ever interested in lieutenant governor until now and then when Pat Quinn who was serving as lieutenant governor uh, took office when the prior governor was impeached all of a sudden now we have like seven people running for lieutenant governor. It's become a very high profile office uh, where up till now uh, very often people would run unopposed for that office. Well, you have to remember too in the state of Illinois that there's a really good chance the governor might get indicted <laughs> <laughs> and, and have throughout the course of time. You know, there's a couple, even though they're not in Chicago, for those of you watching the suburbs, I'm actually more interested, I hate to say it, in some of the uh, congressional races in the suburbs. And um, in the 10th district, there's two, there's two people I really like a lot. Um, on the Democratic side, I really like Elliot Richardson. And um, I've really come to know him, very impressed by him. You know, he, he doesn't have the money of his opponents, but he's been going door to door. He's been calling people on the phone. Um, he is running a much more aggressive campaign. He's very intelligent, thinks things over very well. Um, Eric Quintanilla, I hope I pronounced 
the name correctly as his campaign manager, and they're really working hard, and I think he's, he really has a good grasp of, of foreign policy, not to mention he's, he's what they call these days a blue dog Democrat who's very financially responsible. And I really like him, and on the Republican side, Ari Friedman is like a remarkable, remarkable character. And um, I mean, he graduated at the top of his, um, at the top of University of Chicago, I think he took biology, spent seven years in the Navy, five years as a Seahawk pilot, which is the Navy equivalent of the Black Hawk helicopter. He's got two terms of, du two tours of duty in, uh, Jewish boy, two tours of duty in the Gulf War, 406 shipboard landings, 103, 183 nighttime land landings, went from there, graduated first from, from the University of Chicago, Illinois Circle Medical School, and he's a p highly rated, nationally rated pediatrician. Really, really terrific individual. One of the nice things, there are actually some good people in politics. Not everybody, but, but you know, you get to meet a lot of interesting people along the way. Well, and it gets back, though, to voter turnout. You know, there are a lot of good people who put in the time and effort and taken time away from their careers and their families in order to run. And, and for those people, it's very important that, that the voters get out there and recognize that and make sure that they vote for these people because uh, you can't complain later on if somebody's elected that you don't agree with if you didn't participate in the process. And again, it has been made so easy now for people to participate. You can mail in your ballot without ever leaving your home. They'll mail a ballot to you. You mail it back. You can early vote you know, all day at, at sites all over the city and suburbs. Uh, and you can go to your polling place on election day. So it's been made about as easy as it can be other than somebody coming to your door and, and, and delivering the ballot and taking it back uh, after you vote. Uh, but you've got to have the motivation to go out and do that. And as I said, there, there seems to be a lot of people who are uh, discontented and, and complaining about government. Well, this is your opportunity to make some changes. One person I do want to mention in the 7th Congressional District, and then I want to get on to some of the um, uh, countywide or, or close to metropolitan water reclamation, but we'll get to that in a minute. Wh one of the pleasant surprises, I didn't even know she was going to be on the show, but basically I had somebody booked who gave, gave his time to her, that's Darlena Williams Burnett, who's running in the 7th District. She's, she's the wife of, of Alderman William Burnett. She, she's an important person in her own right, and she's got the support of people like uh, Jesse White and... Um, as well as recorder of deeds, Jean Moore, and, and I like her very much. She, she's, um, so you know what, in, in the 7th District, uh, well actually she's running for two offices. She's actually the endorsed candidate, which surprised me, against the incumbent Danny Davis, um, who was going to originally run for uh, president of the Cook County Board, so it's punch 41 for her in Congress, and she's also running for state central Democratic committee woman, and that's uh, 51. One of, the, one of the things we always talk about, and not too many people talk about it, so I think we should talk. Oh, by the way, I, I'll mention David Radowitz, too, in the Republican race for um, the 5th uh, Congressional District. Uh, David Radowitz, military background, solid businessman. I like him very much, if you're going to go the Republican route, um, which actually I'm taking a Democratic ballot, and I'm not in the 5th Congressional District. Uh, Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. Of course, we, we had the president on before, and this is something fourth largest governmental body in the state of Illinois. Um, you're talking about um, eight or nine people running, some of whom, you know, th th there's a lot of confusion by people. Chicago's got some of the highest quality water, and even though the Water Reclamation District isn't the one that refines the water, so you'll be able to uh, drink it, the fact is what you do in cleaning it before it gets there has a big say in, in whether the, the water is going to be good or not. And um, do we have uh, do we have Scott? No. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna just go from here. We're, we're we want to urge you. We're gonna talk about Scott Cohn, but I want to finish with water rec, rec. We're not gonna take any more calls at this point. So um, you know, there's a lot of talk about disinfecting water, which I am so dead against. It's not that you know if it really made the water better, it's fine. But as Jim Nelly likes to say, what does it do with the? Does there any science behind it? No, and well, right now what the water rec is doing is they've commissioned a study from the University of Illinois to determine whether disinfection works or not. Uh, the, the, the thing with disinfection is it's probably a billion dollar program. Now if it would make the water better, that's something that the taxpayers would want to consider, uh, but the science isn't there yet. So before any decisions are made to spend a lot of money disinfecting water, you have to determine whether the science justifies it. Yeah, and, and the so-called green people, I mean, in this case, let's understand this. There's real green and there, there's, there's real environmentalists and, and then there's people. Everybody wants to say they're an environmentalist these days, whether they are or not. It's actually about a billion and a half dollars over three years, which is actually 
Now, now, what government agency doesn't want to grow? You know what? Water wreck, Terry O'Brien. That's why you want him on the Cook County Board. He'll keep government lean and efficient. But there are three candidates that I personally like. I don't know if you, you like the same three. You can give us your three. But my three are Maureen Connor Kelly, who I like very much, uh, Mariana Spiripoulos, who was appointed and is running for her first time this election, and Barbara McGowan, who's been on the board. And these guys have done a great job. They're efficient. It, you know, there's all kinds of terrific environmental stuff they're doing right now, be it the rain barrels, being other things. And people can, can claim, scream all they want about incumbents and all the rest of it, but these people are, are smart, they're intelligent, they're looking to do the right thing. So Maureen, Connor Kelly, Miana Spiripoulos, and Barbara McGowan are my three candidates. Who do you like, Jim? Well, uh, I, I know both Maureen uh, Kelly and uh, Barb McGowan. Barb's a, actually an incumbent commissioner, and, and they, she's done an excellent job, and I know Maureen would too. And one other race I'd, I'd like to jump in on a little bit, we were going to have Scott Cohen here as a guest, and uh, he was not able to make it, but uh, he's running for lieutenant governor, and uh, that's a race we talked about a little bit right. earlier about the number of people. Scott's a very interesting person in that he's a businessman. He's never held public office. Um, but one of the things he's done um, is uh, created job fairs. And uh, in this economy where everybody is, is, is worried about their job or many people have been laid off, uh, Scott's done something about it and, and created these job fairs where people have come to his campaign office. He's had representatives of companies that are hiring and people have actually walked in there and done interviews and gotten jobs. One of the things I really like about Scott, and this is, this is <clears throat> Jim and I are total in agreement, Scott is, is, is definitely, you know, different good. He's looking to do positive things. He's not getting in there and, well, he did criticize Bogoyevich, but that was good. That, that's fair. That's more than fair. <laughs> but he's looking to do positive things. He's traveled up and down the state. He personally has, has looked at alternative forms of energy. He's looked at, at, at people and the businesses and, and just about all the various counties throughout the state trying to see what people need. And he wants to make a positive difference. And, and he's looking to emphasize jobs, employment, and, and making and positive things. I mean, I like his positive outlook. I think he's a terrific guy. I, I think we should, uh, at this point, get back to my favorite candidate, and maybe yours too, I don't know, Terry O'Brien. But you know what? We had Terry on the first segment. Um, and for those of you watching two-part, go back and watch him on the web. I don't think there's a finer candidate in this election than Terry O'Brien. He's the best of the best. He has proven throughout that he can do the job. He, he, he's actually been able to cut over 30% of the workforce in the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District through natural attrition and retirement while taking on added sewer water management while having a triple A bond rating. The guy is unbelievable. And what is Terry's number is? 96 is his ballot number. We definitely urge you 96 is, is what you punch for Terry O'Brien. He is the best of the best, and, and, and I can't begin to emphasize how important it is to vote for him. And for those of you coming on late, don't get fooled by false reformers. I, I mean, you've got a ward committeeman and alderman who votes with the mayor these days because she's trying to curry his favor. We're talking about Preckwinkle. You want Terry O'Brien to be the next president of the Cook County Board. Um, before we start running out of time, I want to thank, well, first of all, this is a Sonny Hirsch multimedia production, Keith McDonald has been um, his usual great self. And, and the way they arrange these terrific split screens, I mean, these guys are absolutely terrific, and I can't thank them enough. Uh, of course, Jim Nelly, my, my co-host, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Glad you're not in Boston this time. I want to say hi to our entire studio audience, Alita Nelly. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, our website is www.ntnm.org. Jewish Chicago, available free all over the place. If you, if you can still find it, I've got 15,000 papers plus out there. And if you can get them, you ought to go get them. Um, you know what? They're, they're, they're rolling the credits now, but Jim, we're still here. What Last message for the folks? Get out and vote. There's still time. Early vote, absentee vote, or go to your polling place. Absolutely. www.ntnm.org. Vote. vote. Well, you can still vote early through January 28th, as Jim told us. And uh, often, no, you just get to vote the once. So I'm not going to tell that vote. Of course, hi, Tom Dart. We want to mention him, too. Yeah.